morning, church. We want to welcome you online as we start off this service. And we're going to sing songs to God. We invite you to sing along with us. Here we go. Please stand. In the dark and all alone, growing comfortable, are you too scared to move? Walk out of this too. you believe safe and sound stuck in the ground too lost to be found you're just asleep and it's time to leave come on rise up take a breath you're alive now can you hear the voice of Jesus calling us out from the grave like a Was more the blood is kind of love. Wash his sin away. But the door is open wide. The stone's been rolled aside. The old is gone. The light has come. So come on and rise up. Take a breath. You're alive now. Can you hear the voice of Jesus call? Built on 
nothing less And Jesus' blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest faith While holy trust in Jesus' name strong in Savior's love through the storm He is Lord Lord of all When darkness seems to hide His face I rest on Him Unchanging grace in every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. going to come one day and that trumpet sound will happen and we will be ready but right now we need to be ready to reach out here while we're here on this earth for you as this church God we are talking about reaching out and, and doing great things for your kingdom Father teaching the world about the cornerstone of life having you as the cornerstone of everything the cornerstone of this church. We lift up this service. We lift up Tom as he is going to preach from your word, Father. And we lift up the people here today, God, your children. They've come here with all sorts of things that are going on in their lives. Some are great and some are challenging. May we all rest everything at the throne of God today. Those that are online, perhaps you've just tuned in with us and life is really tough right now. We are reaching out to you right now and we are saying that God loves you. Don't lose hope. Find Jesus. We are here for you. Reach out to us. Let Jesus be the cornerstone of your life 
and you will not believe what will be in front of you. The hope and the joy of the world ahead. Today, this whole service is in dedication to you, Jesus, and it's in your name that we pray. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <laughs> Good morning. We are changing things up a little bit. The order is a little different today. New year, new order. No, it's going to confuse everybody. So we're going to start off by citing the black books. We want to know that you're here this morning. So if you just grab those books, put your name in there. Uh, if you've got any changes to your address, anything like that, that's a great time for us at the beginning of the year to get our records straight and fresh. If you're watching online, we want to know that you're out there also, so just uh, say hi to Ray and Linda and Tasha back there, and they will say hi back, and if we've got any information you need for us to have, just let us know through that Facebook uh, messenger. Also, we're Church of Prayer. In the back of all your chairs, there is a prayer card, so I want everybody to take that prayer card out right now. We're going to do homework. <laughs> no, you didn't start with what I want. If you've already started one, get another one. <laughs> no, I need you to get another one, seriously. If you've already started writing prayer requests on a card, take out a new card. How many of you had prayer answered last year? That's what that card's for. That's a praise card. I want you to take a moment and write down what God did for you last year. We talk about praying all year long and we put our request in, but how many times do we take time to share our praises? I want you to do that this morning. I want to see a card for every one of you for what God did for you last year. If you're watching online, same thing. If God answered some big prayers, we want to know it. We want to talk about it. We want to share those things. So do that. You'll drop it in the box before you leave today. If you've got prayer requests, fill those out also. We will be praying for those this week. If you're watching online, send yours in too. You can email them to us at prayers at scottsdalecc.com. And then you can join us on Wednesday night. And we'll be lifting all these prayer requests up and going before God and put them at the foot of Jesus mm -hmm. at the cross. So think about joining us this week for our midweek prayer uh, service, which is at 6 o'clock every Wednesday night. We would love to see all of you there. We've been a little slim the last two weeks. I won't point any names out. Uh, but we'd love to have some new faces there also. Uh, coming up, if you haven't started a new Bible study this year, now is a great time to do that. Uh, the men's Bible study meets on Thursday at Denny's uh, at 8 o'clock. We're doing the Book of John. The ladies meet on Tuesday at 9 o'clock. 10 o'clock. And they meet right back here in this room and uh, see Marlene about getting a book and what that study is about. I think you're doing James, James the book of James. Uh, we have our Sunday Bible study, which we're still doing the book of Daniel. We'll be doing that through the year. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. It's a six months. Okay. Uh, it's a great study. We'll be starting a new one after that. I'm not sure what we're going to be doing, but it follows this service. Uh, also, again, the prayer service on Wednesday night is another great time to learn a little bit about God and about Jesus. Uh, and we have a new one that we're wanting to start, Discipleship's Journey with Jesus. Uh, Linda and Ray are doing that. Linda is an ambassador for this uh, group. Um, it's a great study, and I forgot to put the video in. <laughs> I just now thought of that. Uh, it has a lot of videos with it. It shows you the Holy Land and where these events actually took place. It's a, it's a very biblical study. Um, I encourage you if you're not doing one or if you want a second one, this is a great one to do. There's a sign-up sheet. We, we are waiting. If you're interested, sign up. It doesn't have a time yet. We're kind of waiting to see who's interested, and we'll set a time after that. Uh, she's also talking about being able to do it through Zoom. Uh, so if you can't make it or want to do it, it through a Zoom type of class, talk to her also because we may do a, a joint thing where some people are here and we're Zooming it out also. So get with her or if you have any questions whatsoever about that. Um, next Sunday, talk about mixing things up. 
If you show up at 9.30, well, one, you can't get here at 9.30 next Sunday. Unless they're running. Unless you're running. You can run then you can run up from Scottsdale Road and just come on in. But we're not doing it. We're not running. We're not running. <laughs> oh, no, that's just not bad. A, a reading. <laughs> hey, we could do something like that. Um, so next, when, next Sunday, our service will start at 4 p.m. I know it's kind of ball gamey time. But it'll be the end of one and before the other because it's playoffs, so maybe we'll be all right. Uh, if not, we'll, um, we'll put it on the screen, muted behind me, and we can watch the game. <laughs> I don't think so. uh, but if it's the Cardinals, we have to. No. <laughs> so what time will that be in Africa? <laughs> Is that, ooh, I don't know. What time oh, that's right. It'll be 4, about 4 p.m. I don't know. I don't know what time it is for Godfrey. We're going to be watching Somebody this next week. Uh, but so anyway, be here at about four, uh, 4 o'clock on Sunday afternoon, not Sunday morning, because you cannot get down the street during the day during because it's completely blocked off. So big plans next week. Be here. We might even do a little something special because it is a special mm -hmm. different time. So be here. This time, like I said, we've mixed everything up. Uh, we're going to take up our offering. So if you're here this morning, in the back of the chairs, you'll find your little envelopes. And you just fill that out, put your money in, check in, however, and drop it in the box in the back of the room. If you're watching online, you can go to our webpage. It'll tell you all the different ways that you can give. You can give through Zelle, PayPal, mail it in, call me, I'll come pick it up. Uh, I need to go pick up a couple of right now, right? I know the people are watching and say, well, you haven't been to my house in a while. I'll get there this week. Uh, <laughs> Also, um, if you're here in the building, you can also use those same things as Zell and things like that. So at this time, I just want to pray for our offering. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity to be obedient and just uh, say thank you. Thank you in a way that is tangible to how you take care of us, always providing for us. This is an opportunity for us to give back. Give back to support your ministries, to support, support sharing your kingdom with others in our community. So this morning, I'm just thankful for all those that you have sent here that are part of this ministry and part of giving to this ministry so that we can do your job, your work, your mission in our community. Father God, we ask that you bless this offering. Give us as leaders in a church family wisdom on how you want us to use it. Let us have ears to hear your plan, not ours. And let us have the courage to carry it out. Father God, we thank you for always being our great provider and for always loving us through every situation. And it's in your precious son's name we pray. Amen. Can you hear me? Yeah. All right. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> um, I've been instructed uh, by, I'm not going to tell you who, to go long. So I hope you guys all packed a lunch because I'm going to be up here a while. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, there you go. All right. This is our time of communion. Um, and we all know that are here. And if you're, if you're new... We do this every week, um, just as a remembrance um, of what the Lord done for us. Um, it's easy during the week sometimes to forget um, exactly what Jesus Christ did on that cross. So every Sunday we do this, which is pretty awesome. So um, you guys have the cup. We're doing it this way with the little cup in your hand. Um, as you walked in. So those at home, um, grab your juice and cracker. Tom, grab your juice and cracker. And, uh, you know, we'll do this together, okay? Um, just as a community, we should do this together. We all know the story. Um, at the Last Supper, uh, while they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this and eat it. This is my body. 
So let's do that together. Open it up and we'll take it together. Nice. Now this is the tricky part without spilling it, right? Mm -hmm. Then he took the cup and we had given thanks. He gave it to them saying, drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. He also says, I tell you, I will not drink from this fruit of the vine from now and until the day when I drink it with anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Let's pray. Thank you so much, Lord, for your living sacrifice, a debt we'd never be able to repay. Our hearts are forever indebted to you until you come again. In your name we pray. Amen. this nation you are you're the light in this darkness you're the hope to the hopeless you're the peace to the restless you are there is no one like our God there is no one like our God. The greater things have yet to come, greater things still to be done in this city. The greater things have yet to come, greater things still to be done in this city.
is no one like our God. There is no one like our God. It's great. Anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. But how shall they ask him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them unless someone sends them? That is what the scriptures are talking about when they say, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace with God and bring glad tidings of good things. In other words, how welcome are those who come preaching God's good news. At the beginning of every year, I try to look at the coming year and set up a plan for what we're going to do that year. What direction we're going to go that year. I pray about it. The elders pray about it. I look at the needs of our church. I look at the needs of our community. I look at the current status of our church and our people. And I ask God to show me, to show all of us, 
what he has planned for us for the coming year. And every year I try to find a verse that kind of is like the motto for that vision, for that plan. And use it as a reminder throughout the year of what our, our goal is, what our vision is, what our mission is. I just shared with you this year's verse. Romans 10, verse 13 through 15. You're going to hear that verse a lot over the next year. It's an important verse for us as a church. How are they to know if someone doesn't tell them or doesn't show them? Today, as I usually do this time of year, I try to lay that plan out. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So I hope, I noticed Kim brought lots of donuts and lots of zucchini bread. And I hope she brought all that extra stuff for a reason. <clears throat> we're going to be here a while. <laughs> Mike tried to steal some of my pages out of my notes, but he didn't get away with it. But every year at this time, I try to set that plan out for you. And I asked you to go on this journey with me. So hopefully, today I will inspire you to do that. That God will open your hearts and your minds and we are all on the same page and we are all looking to do the same thing. And that's serve God. Serve our community. Serve each other. The past couple of years, we've had some constraints on what that mission looked like and what our activities looked like with the pandemic and all the craziness that was going on. But this year, I feel God is directing us to go back out there. It's time. It's time for us to take the opportunities that are out there for us to regroup and look at this moving beyond this building. God gave us that time of rest over the last two years so that we could regroup, so that we could refocus. He even gave us a new building to do it out of, one that fits our needs and must be in a spot where he wants us to be more than where we were. We have a new opportunity. God is setting us up for what he has in store for us next. For what our community needs and how we can meet those needs. We at Scotia Christian Church have a long history of community service. We have over 60 years of being the hands and feet of Jesus in this community. It's time that we take our place back into our community and impact it in great ways. Our mission pretty much stays the same. God's mission stays the same. Going out into the community and being the hands and feet of Jesus and spreading his message of salvation to all, as many as we can. That is what we're called to do. Today, and over the last few months, I've really felt a strong pull for us to return to our community. It's very easy for us to do all these little things in the house and sit here on Sunday morning and love on each other and take care of each other. But I feel a strong pull that it's time for us to return to our community. It'll take all of us if we're going to make this happen, if we're going to be successful at doing this. It takes more than just us meeting here on Sunday morning and having a great worship to accomplish what God is calling us to do. It's important for us to be here on Sunday morning, as we talked about last week. It's also important for our individual development and growth, which we talked about last week. If you missed it, you can, I encourage you to go back and watch that sermon. It's online. But all that stuff was to get us ready to get us as individuals ready and us as a church family ready to go. This, year vision, this year's vision, I've titled Beyond the 52, Church Outside of Sunday Mornings. 
What does that mean exactly? What does it look like? You're going to see that beyond the 52 a lot over the next year. But let's talk about that for a minute. What does it mean beyond the 52? Well, there's 52 weeks in a year. That means there's 52 Sundays that we're all going to be here together every Sunday together. But that leaves us 313 days. Okay, 314 if it's a leap year, but this isn't a leap year. Because I knew somebody would call me out on that. <laughs> that leaves us 313 days that we are not in church, not in this building. That's 313 days that we're out there in the world, living our lives, being part of our families, going to our jobs, interacting in our community, and if we admit it or not, we're influencing people while we're out there. Are we doing it a, a good way, a bad way? Are we just letting people think it's okay to be indifferent? Especially when it comes to the question about God and what our responsibility is to our fellow man and sharing God with them. So the question I want you to ask yourself this morning is how are you influencing people that you come in contact with? I want you to keep that in your mind as we go through this morning. And in a couple of hours, I'll ask you again, how are you going to influence people? <laughs> as Christians, as the church, we're called to a higher standard than the normal person than the people that we come in contact with in a lot of ways. We're called not just to talk, to talk about God and about being a Christian, but we're called to walk the walk, to be examples. We are called to be examples of Jesus. When Jesus was out in the community, he didn't just talk about God on Sunday morning in the synagogue. He talked about it every chance he got. He taught, teaches us to do the same thing. He teaches us that by the examples that how we live also is how we spread the gospel. We need to let God be the driving force in our lives again. Not just on Sunday morning. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to guide us and direct us he will never lead us wrong. It's time for us to make an impact on our world. Because the other side is winning right now. And that's not good for them or for us. Because we have to live in this world. But it's really not good for them because we get out of it alive. They won't. So the impact that we have is such a huge responsibility on the eternity of maybe the people that we love. We are called to be the hands and feet of Jesus every single day, wherever we're at, whoever's around. As a church, God has called us together. For just a time as this. We're not here today by luck or by chance. We're not in this building, in this neighborhood, by chance. He hasn't get, gathered us together as a family by chance. He did it because he needs us, each of us, because we each play a part, to carry out his mission. God brought us all together for a purpose. He has a plan for us as a collective. That plan is to share the gospel. I know that's scary for some. We're called to be messengers. We are called to be messengers of God's story. Now, don't want to freak out on me. Not yet. Don't, you can breathe. I'm only going to make you come up one at a time and talk. You may not be called to be standing on the corner of McDowell and Scottsdale Road with a bullhorn. 
telling everyone they're going to hell. That may not be your call. Now, it may be Paul's. <laughs> but he don't need a bullhorn, right? <laughs> but we are all called. There may be something unique about you that God made you in a certain way so that you can touch a certain group of people. You may be God's bullhorn. But if we sit here on Sunday morning and never do anything outside of Sunday morning, we're not doing what God has called us to do. God called each of us to share the gospel, to share the good news. Each of us in our own way have that responsibility. The most common and successful way that we do that is by being a good example of Christ. To be Christ-like when we go out into the world. Loving on people. Taking care of people. Take, talking about how God has changed our life. How being a Christian affects me. What it's like to be a Christian. What it's like to have a Christian family. What it's like to have a church praying for you. Being Christ-like every single day is sharing the message. Is preaching the message. And we should do it in every situation we're in. And above all, we are to help others develop a relationship with Jesus. So they too can believe. Think about how you first heard about Jesus. Maybe you went to study school when you were a kid. Maybe granny dragged you along. Maybe you didn't go to church at all, like so many of these people are today. So they're never going to have that opportunity to hear about it from church. Some of you may have not heard about Jesus at church. It was someone though told you about Jesus. What if no one had ever told you or introduced you to God, the Father, the Holy Spirit? The church is our best tool to accomplish all of this. God brought us together to carry out this mission. It doesn't mean it all happens in this building, though. 1 Corinthians 12 goes into a great deal about what the church is and how we as a group, as a collective, take care of his mission, which means includes going out into the world. I challenge you to read that 1 Corinthians 12 this afternoon, because I'm not going to read it all to you this morning. It talks about how the church and its members fit together to fulfill God's calling. His calling for us as a group and for us as individuals. It talks about how each of us have, a, have different things that we're good at, different gifts. That's by design. God's design. What I'm good at None of you are good at. <laughs> well, you're good at, I'm okay at. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> We're all good at different things. We all have our strengths. We all have our talents. And we all wonder, what is my gift? Look around. You use your gift every single day. Because it's normal to you, it doesn't look like a gift maybe. We always think, that gift looks better. I want that gift. I want to sing like Ashley. Well, not today. <laughs> Ashley has laryngitis. That's, we didn't fire her, but we did want to have an all-boy stage today. <laughs> we all have different gifts. And our own gifts, sometimes it's hard for us to recognize. But never underestimate the power of your gift. Maybe it's just sitting and listening to someone. Maybe it's just being there with someone. Maybe it's cooking. Maybe it's talking on the phone. Well, those aren't gifts. It, yes, they are. Loving people, taking care of people, whatever their needs are, those who are where our gifts come in. But together, as a group, we get to cover a lot more areas because we get to take all of our specialties and then we can cover anything that comes along because we got somebody that's an expert at that. 
1 Corinthians 12 also describes the church as if it was a human body. A living, breathing thing that God created. That's the church. And each body part, just like our human body parts, has a very specific function. The hands, the eyes, the heart, the lungs, and the body functions, all these different things are best when they all work together. We see so many times when something is not working right. And how that... <laughs> And how that affects all the things else. Like when I got a frog in my throat. <clears> throat> if my throat is not open, I can't talk real well. Those body parts are not all working together. But we all need to be part of that working body of Christ. If we want to be able to run the race. To carry out the mission. To do all the things top notch level that God wants this church to do. Because he brought you to this church for a reason. Because of your gifts and your talents, there was a need for you here. Whatever that is, if you don't do it, we have a hole. We have one hand tied behind our back. We have a patch over an eye. Our heart is not pumping enough blood to get the oxygen through our body. And we slow down and get sluggish. We as in church, we are the body of the church. Each of us have a function. And we need to perform our function if the body of the church is going to be effective. And that's what I'm calling you to today. To step up and be willing to be who you are called to be. To be the part of the body that God has designated you to be. Are you doing your part? That's an important question for us to ask. Especially today as we are looking at this new brand new year. At this moment, what is God asking us and you to accomplish this year? So here we are. We're called to be the church. We are called to be Scottsdale Christian Church. And just like all the other, like all of us in different parts of the body, all the churches that God has planted around the world also have a function. And if our church doesn't do our function, there's a hole in God's plan. We don't want our church to be the hole. So what does that look like? What should it look like for us? Well, for the church, Ephesians 4. I love the way this talks about the unity and the maturity of the body of Christ. This is what we should strive to look like. Ephesians 4, starting with verse 1, going through 16. As a prisoner for the Lord... Then I urge you to live life, a life worthy of the calling you have received. You have received. We have received. Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the, script, the Spirit through the bond of peace. This is talking about us as a church family. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is over all and through all and in all. But to each of us, grace has been given as Christ appointed it. This is why it says, when he ascended on high, he took many captives and gave, gave gifts to his people. What does he ascended mean except that he had also descended to the lower earthly regions? When Jesus came, when he was born as a human, he who descends is the very one who ascends higher than all the heavens in order to fill the whole universe. When, God, or when Jesus went back to heaven after the crucifixion, after he rose again. So Christ himself gave the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers 
you to equip his people for works of service. That's you. That's us. To equip us for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up until we all reach unity in the faith and in the knowledge of the Son of the God and become mature, attaining the whole measure of, to, to the fullness of Christ. So we talked about last week taking care of ourselves, getting as much knowledge as we can, fulfilling and reading and studying and being prepared. There will no longer be infants. If we do all these things, we won't be infants anymore. Tossed about and back and forth by the waves and blown here and there by every wind of teaching and by the cunning and craftiness of people and their deceptive scheming. Because we know what's here, they can't fool us. They can't tell us that that's not right or that is right or that's not God. We know. We can't be fooled if we're ready. Instead, speaking the truth in love, we will grow to become in every respect the mature body of him who is, in, is the head, that is Christ. From him the whole body, joined and held together by every supporting ligament, grows and builds itself up in love, and each part does its work. That's what the church should look like. That's what we should look like. Most of you have this world of knowledge. And I'm talking about world of knowledge of the Bible. A lot of you have been around for a while. <laughs> and I don't mean that you're all old. <laughs> But I know, I hear you talking, I see you in Bible studies. I know you have a world of knowledge. You should be more than just infants at this point. You should be walking more, talking more, walking your faith more, talking your faith more. But how many of you, as a Christian... Still want to sit in the crib. Have someone carry you around. Feed you. And goo-gooing, ga -goo ga instead of saying words. Most of you have a world of knowledge to share. You have experiences. Most of you have these amazing stories of what God has done for you in your life. How he's answered this prayer or that prayer. Or just how it's so much easier to get through life just knowing. When we go through those bad times or those changes, we just know that God's there. may not change the situation, but it sure makes it easier to get through it. Most of you have life changing events happened in your life because of God, because of Jesus. But most of you are reluctant to share those very things that makes you breathe easier, that gives you hope, that gives you peace, that guarantees your future. Those are the things we should come easily sharing. We talk about our earthly accomplishments without any faith. We'll tell you how great we are in every other area, except when it comes to God. Because oh, it just makes people uncomfortable. Most of us need to stop the reluctance. People want to hear your stories. People need to hear your stories. They're not nearly as reluctant as you think they're going to be. Now, you may not get us rallying applause the first time, and there may be a little uncomfortableness, but you never know when your story is going to be the beginning of their story. We, the church, you, we all need to become God's faithful witnesses. And what should that look like? Well, just so happens that it tells us in the Bible. Colossians 3, verses 1 through 17. This is what a faithful witness looks like. This is what we need to look like. 
This is living as those made alive in Christ should look like. Since you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above where Christ is. Seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things above, not on earthly things. For you died and your life is now hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your, is your life, appears, then you, shall, you also will appear with him in glory. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, and idolatry. Which of these things the wrath of God is coming for these things? You used to walk in these ways in the, in the life you once lived. We left that life behind. Or at least we're trying to in most cases. But now you must also rid yourself of all such things as these. Anger, rage, malice, slander, filthy language from your lips. People say, it doesn't say not to cuss in the Bible. Filthy language from your lips. So, oh, a little cuss word here and there out in the world ain't bad, is it? Do not lie to each other. You're not old. <laughs> I'm not old. Hey, now. <laughs> do not lie to each other. How many times do we lie, lie each other by the lie of omission? By not telling them they need to be in church. Don't lie to each other. Since you have taken off your old self with its practices and now have put on the new self, you would not be doing these things, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Here there is no Gentile or Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, bar bar barbarian, slave or free, but Christ is all and is, is in all. Do we reflect any of this stuff? Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourself with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If, if any of you has a grievance against, against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. And over all these virtues, put, put on love, which binds them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of Christ rule in your heart since as members of one body you are called to peace and be thankful. Let the message of Christ dwell among you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom through psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit, singing to God with gratitude in your hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or in deed, do it all in the name of the Lord, uh, Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Are you living a life of faithful witness? Let the peace of Christ rule our hearts, our actions. Whatever you do, wherever you are, even on a Monday at the grocery store, or Wednesday when you're at the office, or wherever it is, whether, wherever it is, the words you speak to others or the deeds that they see you doing are important. Are they a faithful witness to God? To what he has done for you, what he has done in his life? Are you being Christ-like? Does people or do people see Jesus in you? In your actions? In your work? No, I'm not saying they may see Satan either. But they need to see Jesus. They need to see how he's changed you. They need to say, I want that. When we do that, people ask us to talk about it. They open the door for you to talk about your stories and to share God with them. So that's what I feel we are being reminded of today. That is what God is calling us to be. His hands and feet in this community in our families, at the grocery store, our jobs, bus stop, wherever it is, the doctor's office. 
So what does that look for like for us as a church? I know it's a little different as individuals. But what does it look like as a church? What should our vision be? Jesus gave us our mission over 2,000 years ago. It's still the same. Still the same for the church. Still the same for us. And for even for us in Scottsdale Christian Church, 2,000 years ago, Jesus gave us our mission. It's found in Matthew, verses 18 through 20. These were Jesus' last instructions to us before he ascended back into heaven. Then Jesus came to them. He came to all of us and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. That's our mission. We are called to go beyond 52 Sundays of the year. We are called to go into the world and make disciples. Doesn't mean that you have to be preachers or Bible scholars to do it. You just have to be good examples of Christ. To be like Jesus. To be Christ-like. All those things we talked about last week help prepare us for that. Know your Bible. Pray. Have a relationship with God. Have a relationship with Jesus. All these things is what we use to talk about and to do what Jesus is asking us to do, calling us to do. But most of all, we do it by loving others. Which brings me to a very important, heartfelt question. What does it mean to love your neighbor? What does loving our neighbor look like? Sounds easy, right? We take care of their needs. We don't judge them. We are nice to them. We do things for them. We help them. All good things. All part of the process. But what does God think is the most important thing we can do to show our love for someone? Let me put it like this. Who do you love the very most? Think about that for a second. Get that person in picture in your head. Think about that person. Do you want that person to go to hell? Or do you want them to go to eternity in heaven? I know it's a silly question, and maybe it is. But think about that. What is real love? What is God-type love? It's wanting something so much more for that person than they could ever get on their own. Something that they cannot do on their own, which is what they need more than anything else. And that's eternity in heaven. That's a relationship with God. If we don't give that to person, we can take care of all their needs. We can pay all their bills. We can cook all their meals. We can be their best friend. But if we don't introduce them to Jesus, they're still going to go to hell. Did we love that person? Did we really love that person? So what does it mean to love our neighbor? What if? What if you're the example that gets them in heaven? If you don't show them, are you loving them? What if they end up in hell because you didn't share your story? Or you wasn't being Christ-like in front of them. You claimed to be a Christian, but they didn't see it. What if no one ever shared God with them? What if we only kept God in this room? Are we loving our neighbor? We can do all the outreaches that we want to do. We can take up all the food drives we want to do. But if we don't introduce them to Jesus, are we really loving them and taking care of their needs? This is the basis for our vision as a church. This is the basis of what we have to accomplish beginning now. Our vision for 2022. 
has to include sharing the gospel, introducing them to Jesus. God is calling us to go into our community and love people. To love them so much that they end up in heaven. Which leads me back to that verse that I shared with you earlier. Our 2022 verse. As I read it this time, I want you to think about how you play a part in the vision. Anyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. But how shall they ask him to save them unless they believe in him? And how can they believe in him if they have never heard about him? And how can they hear about him unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them unless someone sends them? This is what the scriptures are talking about when they say, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach or share the gospel of peace with God and bring glad tidings of good things. In other words, how welcome are those who come sharing God's word, sharing our experiences, sharing our testimonies, sharing God's good news. If we don't tell them if we don't show them, if we don't, aren't the examples for them, if we don't love them enough, who will? How will they know? How will they be saved? How will they be, make it to heaven when they may not come in this room? And the world is certainly not telling them about this. The world is doing just the opposite. How will they know if we don't tell them? What will this look like for us in this room? What does it look like for us to go out in our community and share the gospel? What does it look like for those who God adds to our family over the next year and has been adding to our family this past year. First, we have to be ready as individuals as we talked about last week. We have to prepare. We have to do it. We have to study. We have to go to our Bible studies. We have to do all those things so that when we walk out there, we're strong. We're not weak. When somebody brings up the Bible or asks a Bible question, we don't shy away from it. We may not have the perfect answer, but we at least can have a, a conversation with them about it. may not have all the answers, but you can promise, hey, I'll find out. Or, hey, let me pull out my phone and let's Google it together. You have a whole lot of answers right here. Now, I want you to be careful about what site you use. But this is a world of information here. Gotquestions.com. It'll, it's got a lot of questions. All you got to do is type in the question and it gives you answers. And it's a biblical site. Uh, Genesis, what's that one? Answers in Genesis is another one. <laughs> Enduringword.com. Three really good sites that you can pull up on your phone and get answers right then. And not only do you get the answer for them, now you have the answer yourself. So what does it look like for us in this room? First, we have to do it individually. Then we have to be ready as a church. Each one of us doing our part, doing what our part of the body requires of us. If you're the one that's supposed to open this, the blinds so they can see in here, open the blinds. If you're the one that's supposed to go and talk to this group or that group, go talk to this group or that group. If you're the ones that's supposed to fold the bulletin, whatever it is that God's got you here for, do it. Do it. If we do it as a family, if each of us do our part, if we do it by going out in our community, we do it by making a difference. Not by just sitting here in pews on Sunday. We don't have pews, but sitting here in chairs on Sunday morning. And if we need something to accomplish it, if we are being faithful witnesses like we're called to be, and there's something we need to accomplish, something that God is calling us to do, God will provide us with what we need. 
We all see this happening already in our church. We see that when we've had a need, that God has taken care of it. That is why I'm so sure that He'll do it again. When we pray, God answers. 2022, we will see a new ministry develop out of our church. Amen. This new ministry is going to be focusing on young adults. Amen. We needed that. Yeah. We've been praying about that. But we didn't have anyone to lead that. And what happened? Because we were out in the community, God hooked us up. Not only did He answer our prayer, but he answered a couple's prayer also. <laughs> Zach and Asia will be drive, the driving force behind this new ministry. They had just moved into town. They felt God calling them to this community and to work with young adults. We needed the same thing. God put us in a path on that Saturday to have a conversation and look what's happening. We're in the process of setting this new ministry up. You've all even put your money behind it. We did. We had a special offering so that they have some seed money to get this thing going. And we raised fifteen hundred dollars on one night yeah, praise God. Amen. to get this ministry started. God answers prayers when we're out there. We can sit in here and ask all day, but until we get up and walk out, that's where the action happens. I'm so excited to see what this ministry is going to do. I'm so excited to see how God works through this ministry. I'm so excited to see how God works through Zach and Asia and their new little one. But this is only the tip of the iceberg. This is their part of the body. What is your part of the body? Each of us have to be doing our part. Each of us also are being called in some specific way. May not be as dramatic and as theirs, but in our own way, it's just as important. Some will have high profile, pro, profile jobs. Others will be behind the scenes. But it's going to take all of us. In the lobby, you probably noticed that I'd done some redecorating. <laughs> that area, that wall is going to be the beyond the 52 wall. That's where we're going to be reaching out into our, that's where you're going to get the information that you need. You'll see a map of our zip code. You'll see a blown up section of this neighborhood behind us, which I feel is where we're really being called to. You will see us, that is our mission field. That board, that area is going to be where we display and have our sign-up sheets, and all the different stuff that we're going to be doing to accomplish our vision for this coming wall. That's our vision wall. Remember the vision boards we had to make in college and high schools? And stuff? That's our vision wall. We already have a few things planned. This is our list. And this is out there, so you know ahead of time. You can already plan on when the Christmas party is, and when you're going to have yard sale Santa. When our October food drive is going to be. But the first thing I want to, is in your bulletin, there's a flyer about socks. I needed, I wanted us to start the year off right now. I didn't want to wait. So we're doing a sock drive for um, Shoebox Ministry. They put things to, uh, boxes together for the homeless. And one of the things that a homeless person really enjoys is a new pair of socks. You don't understand what a blessing that is to a homeless person. So we're collecting socks through the end of February for Shoebox Ministry. They'll have new, new socks, men's and women's. Just drop them in that box out there on our vision wall. And make sure that, you know, they don't get lost. The buddy says, I love the little car too. <laughs> Again, we'll be doing the food drive with Vista Del Camino that we did like in October when we went out into the neighborhood. But we're going to build it. We're going to make it bigger this year. Yep. Not only is it going to be the businesses in our complex, we want to get all the businesses in the area that we can. And we want to at least do this neighborhood again. Maybe we'll get this neighborhood across the street on the other side of Thomas also. I mean, Scottsdale Road this time too. 
Let's do three tons of food instead of one. And let's have those conversations with people like Mike had with Zach in Asia out there on the street. Making a difference. The conversations we had out here when people were dropping off the food. Introducing them to Jesus, to God, to community. I hope that we'll get working again with Family Promise. Helping homeless families in our community. But all of this is not done alone. I can come up here all day and make all kinds of lists. We'll be doing Feed My Starving Children. We've got a couple of those coming up also in the soon. But I can come up with all these great ideas. But if it's not something you're interested in or if it doesn't fit what you think your, your gifts are, they're just lists on a piece of paper. So I want your ideas. In the bulletin, you'll find this little survey looking thing. What types of service projects would you like to see the church do? Doesn't necessarily say that you have to do that one. But then the next one says, what type of service project would you participate in? And what level of participation are you willing to do? I'll lead it. I'm not a leader, but I'll lead it. Or I'll do this, or I'll do that. I'll, you know. Let's be specific here. Fill this out. Now, we're going to get a lot of ideas that may not work. But they may trigger something that will work. Or we may get four or five people saying the same thing. But a bunch of blank spaces don't do me a lot of good. So I need you to don't fill it out today. Take this home. Think about it. Pray about it. And really honestly answer these questions and bring it back. And we'll be using these over the year, two years, on different types of projects that we can do. Your idea may not ever happen. But it may be the first ones on the list. Or it may trigger something that we've got two or three that are almost the same. If you put them all together, we need your ideas. My brain is not very big. <laughs> so we need ideas. We need your participation in that. The second thing we need is we need your support. Not just as cheerleaders, but as participants. Both physically and and yes, we need you financially. I think we've covered the physical part pretty good. And I'm only going to spend a few minutes on the financial part, I promise. It's not going to be a real hard hit tithing sermon. But the one thing that I've seen over the past three years is that whenever I've shown you a need, you've come through. Whenever we've had a need for something, we've answered the call. We've seen... Things that we raised, what, $14,000 when we moved? Wow. $1,500 last week for this, this new ministry. Back in the spring, we bought cameras and computers. I think that was fourteen dollars or $1,500 for that also. We did all those Christmas bags, which was another $1,400. You always amaze me. I love the way we step up when we see a need and we don't have to go in debt to do it over the last three years we've worked hard to get the budget in line we've made a lot of cuts some wasn't easy and for the last year and a half or so we've pretty much been in the black where you know, if you're in the red you're spending more than you we pretty much ride that line now, there is a couple of times where we have to, well, don't pay that bill until after Sunday's offering. We've done that. <laughs> or don't pay this. We have, we've got all the bills set up at different stagger throughout the month. So as the money comes in, we can... Let me tell you, that's, that, that's hard. Yeah. That's hard to manage. It takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of brain power. It ta makes a lot of worry time. So here's what I'm going to ask you to do. We average... We need to average a little over $2,700 a week. That's down from $7,000. <laughs> we average about $2,700 a week. We need a couple of weeks of a bumper. 
to get us so that not that we want to spend the money but so we can pay the bill when we need to pay the bill we can just sit down and pay and not have to hope that Sunday's offering is the right amount to cover the bill I would just love to have a little breathing room for us or if this TV broke this week or we can get we can replace it if we have a little bit of buffer or if we need to order a new cable or a new cord or whatever those things is and we don't have to plan all those things so I'm asking you over the next couple of months to pray about it think about it maybe you can give up something for a few weeks and just give a little bit of extra so that we can go into this year in a more comfortable position so that we can be ready when we need to go out into the world or we need to do this or we need to buy this or to, to do that ministry we can do it so again I just asked did you be faithful and follow God's lead on this God provides for everything we need and I know he's going to provide for us as a church but he provides for us as a church through us so to wrap all this up with a nice bow Scottsdale Christian Church is alive and well right we are here to serve this community we are here to make a difference in this community we are here to love those in this community and we're here to be we're here to support each other also we are alive and well God has called us together to do this together to do this to complete our mission we must go out into the mission field. The mission field is beyond those doors. When you walk through that door today, you will be stepping into our mission field. We must go into the world and we must make a difference. We must love them. We must make disciples. We must share our stories. We must take care of their needs. We must get them to heaven. We have a lot of great people here that want to make a difference. I know you do. So let's do that. Let's not let our fears or our age or our whatever it is that we're using as an excuse keep us from doing what we know and what we want to do. Let's go make a difference in our community. Let's go love them all the way to heaven. Because that's what true love is. That's what our true mission is. Who's with me? I'm going to ask the praise team to come up. And as they're coming up, I'm going to ask you if you're with me. And if you're with me, as they're getting settled in, I want to pray for us. Pray for this year. And if you're with me, I want you to stand up. And let everybody see that you're all in. And that you're willing to go be the hands and feet of Jesus. Let's pray. Father God. We thank you for this church. We thank you for this, this ministry that has affected so many lives, has changed so many of our lives. We thank you for the opportunity to be a part of it. Sometimes we wonder why you called us here. Uh, some of us, you know, there's a bunch of misfits put together. But God, you love us and you have a plan for us exactly as we are. Father God, thank you for sharing your vision, your plan. Thank you for being our provider. And Father God, this morning I want to pray for each of us. Pray that we are obedient in all areas of this ministry. Pray that we have courage that we have the courage to step up and do what we know we're being called to do Father God prepare us and let us prepare ourselves so that we're ready at a moment's notice to be what you need us to be to be the, the voice to be the example to be the encourager.
to those you put in our path. Father God, prepare our community so when we approach these people that we're safe. They already know that. They see it in us. They're safe to ask the question, what is God like? What is Jesus like? And we have the courage to answer that question. Father God, let us be that driving force in this community. Father God, give us strength. Keep Satan at bay. Let our hearts and our minds be totally focused on you. Let us listen only to you and not to Satan. Father God, let our doors be open. For anybody in our community that fits into this family, lead them here. And let us welcome them and embrace them. Just as each of us were embraced when we came in. Let us be bold in our inviting each other. And inviting our neighbors and our friends and strangers. Let us not forget our mission. But most of all, let us be your hands and feet. Father God, I ask you to bless Scottsdale Christian Church in a big way this year. I ask that you bless this church family in a big way this year. I ask that you give me the strength and the power to lead this group. And we thank you. Because the reason we want to do it is because we want others to have what we have. That relationship with you and your son and that gift of salvation that he paid for on the cross. And that's the message we want to share. And it's in his name we pray this morning. Amen. Amen. We won't stop now, will we, guys?
Amen. We just want to remind you today, and if you're online right now, and you know there's all this hope about things that the church is ready to do, but perhaps you're just not there. You're challenged in where you are right now. We are here for you. Tom is here for you. The elders are here for you. You have to reach out, though. You have to be brave enough to reach out. Let go of the pride and understand that a breakthrough can only come when you reach out to God and reach out to the church. We are here for you. We love you. It doesn't matter where you are or what you've done. God loves you and we love you. you. Say something online. Call it out. Reach out to the church. Call the number. Anyone. We will be here for you. God loves you. Jesus loves you. Don't miss it. Same with us here today, church. We want to have, welcome you uh, into this year in a great way. Let's not miss Jesus. Amen. Amen. There's a Bible study starting right now. <laughs> and uh, we want to wish you all a wonderful week. We'll see you next week.